Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, hope you're all doing well. Uh, eager to be back to March 22 semester, where more, or more of the classes will actually be uh, physical now, right? Um, well, I hope you're all eager to come back. At least you can go to the lab, go to the tutorials, meet your friends, you know, yeah? while following all the SOP uh, set by the university, right? So, uh, <clears throat> for this module is a computer aided engineering and geometric modeling. Uh, I am not your. I'm not going to be the full lecturer for this module. I will take over. I think only the first month. After that, uh, our new staff will join, and then uh, she will take over uh, from then onwards. Okay. So at the meantime, myself will do the lecture, and I will take one of the tutorial session, which is on Thursday, two to six. Now, Tuesday, 8 to 12 session will be by another staff, uh, Zafira. I don't know if you have met her before, uh, Miss No Zafira. Okay, so she's very proficient with CAT because that's, uh, that's her area, CAT and uh, ANSYS simulation, right? Okay, so uh, for this first lecture, I will introduce about the module itself. What is uh, a bit more about the module? What are the uh, assessments, the learning outcomes? And I will show you quickly as well uh, the times page that we have for now. Okay, and then after that, we will continue with introduction to what is computer aided engineering. Because we see our topic here is computer aided engineering and geometric modeling. Okay. Right. Now, uh, before I move on, I just want to uh, remind you all, right, in Taylor's engineering, uh, in fact, engineering, all the engineering courses in Malaysia, the ones that are accredited, we are called an outcome-based education. So outcome-based education means we need to have a program education objective. We have program learning outcomes, and then we have module learning outcomes for every module later. So for mechanical engineering, uh, I assume most of you here are mechanical. I think there are one or two who are from uh, taking this as an elective. You have the same PO, except some of the keywords here like PO1, where it says achieve a high level of technical expertise and excel in positions in mechanical engineering. So for your respective uh, program, it will be chemical engineering or electrical electronic engineering, but other words are all exactly the same. Okay, so your PO is to achieve high level technical expertise in positions in mechanical engineering. Your PO2 is CDIO, basically, conceive, design, implement, operate mechanical systems, uh, processes and products that consider functionality, safety, cost effectiveness and sustainability. And third one is about lifelong learning and aspire to leadership positions at both multinational companies and enterprises. Now, program education objectives. Uh, of course, if you look at this, maybe I ask you, do you think you can achieve this when you graduate? Once you graduate as a fresh grad, do you think you're able to achieve this already? Yeah, you can just show me yes or no under the... Uh, uh, using Zoom. Some say yes, some say no. Do you think you can achieve all this? Can you aspire to leadership positions? Can you go to leadership positions once you graduate? <coughs> Hopefully. <clears throat> okay, only very few. The rest, I don't know if you are listening or not. I hope you are. Only like four or five answers so far. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, you may achieve this or you may not achieve this. Now, most of the chances is as a fresh graduate, you will not be avail available, uh, you will not be able to achieve this immediately. Right? So that's why PEO, we don't measure this when you graduate. Okay. We measure your program educational objective three years after you graduate from the program. So let's say now you're all in year two, right? So once you graduate, year two is 2022. Once you graduate in 2024, we will contact you later, three years later. Means we'll contact you in 2027. Yeah, I can't even imagine it's so far away now. <laughs> we will contact you 2027 or 2028. We will check what is your position at the moment. Uh, have you have a status of uh, as an engineer, graduate engineer status and all these things. So we measure this three to five years after you graduate under our alumni survey. 
So I just want to remind, we will remind you every year. So uh, always try to help us to answer the question air later, if some of the staff contact you later. Okay, it will be by individual staff. If we do contact you, please cooperate. So we measure this three to five years later. What you will be able to achieve once you graduate is your program learning outcome. Okay, this is the, you are, there are 12 program learning outcomes and you're expected to achieve all this once at your graduation, when you graduate in the fourth year. Okay, so that's how we measure uh, your PRO at the end of the graduation and PO three years after your graduation. Okay, so for this module, uh, CAE module, there are four learning outcomes. It's a four credit module and it has four learning outcomes. First module learning outcome is to create 3D models using SOLIDWORKS. Okay, uh, this is mapped to your PLO5, which is on using appropriate techniques, resources, and modern engineering and IT tools including prediction and modeling to complex engineering activities with an awareness of the accompanying assumptions and limitations. So basically in ML01, you will learn a new tool, which is SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if you already know some of it, great, but this module will give you even more uh, things that you may not have used before uh, as part of your year one studies, okay? Now, ML02 is to be able to generate 2D engineering drawing of part and assembly models. Now, 2D drawing is very important uh, when you go to work because they are part of a communication. So you use 2D model to communicate with manufacturing team, how they can do the CNC machining, uh, what sizes, what, what are the dimensions you require and so on. And because of this, this is mapped to your PLO 10, effectively communicate complex engineering activities, both orally and in a written form in both technical and non-technical context. So this will be a technical context in a written form. So you'll learn how to generate with a proper template, the 2D engineering drawing, okay? And then ML03 is about assemble part models into complex and interconnected solid models. And ML04 is to create and simulate, create the simulation and animation of assembly model using motion study. Now PLO2 is mapped to your PL, sorry, ML03 and 4, they are mapped to your PLO 3 and 4, okay? Uh, this one will be mapped to your PLO 2. Identify, formulate, analyze, and document complex engineering challenges to arrive at viable solution and sustain it. So this is more about uh, complex problem solving. Now you will see later the question, assignment questions or tests related to this are uh, about solving some problems later. So it's not just simply, you will learn how to do the connection, how to do assembly, how to do the simulation, but most of the questions will not be so simple as just asking you to do a simulation, right? There will be a problem that you need to solve uh, when you answer the questions later. Okay. So these are the four MLOs, a mapping to the four PLOs. Now, uh, this is important. You need to keep all this, uh, you need to have a record of all this because why? In your final year, when you do your professional engineers and society, you will actually be asked to create your own program learning outcome. Uh, not to create your own program learning outcome, sorry. You'll be asked to check whether you have achieved the program learning outcomes or not by year four. So in year four, in PS module, you'll be asked to calculate, have you done PRO5? If yes, you need to show the evidence. So one of the ways to show the evidence is to look into MLO1. What are some of the assessments linked to MLO1? What are the marks that I get for ML01, for example? Then that's how you prove to your uh, how you prove yourself in PS that you have achieved PL05, for example. Of course, not just from this module, it can be from all the modules you've done before. Okay, that's why it's very important for you to understand this. Right. So there are five assessments. Now, this module is 100 percent continuous assessment. There are two tests, one in week seven, one in week eleven. Okay, now uh, the test will be 20%, 20%, and assignment one, two, three will be 10%, 25, and 25%. So assignment one, the first one will be in week nine, assignment two will be week 12, assignment three will be week 14. Okay, so this is the assessments and the due week, and these are the MLO assessed in each assessment. So MLO one, you can see clearly, is only for test one. 
Okay, meaning that basically uh, <coughs> uh, it will be only in terms of your 3D CAD modeling. Okay? So this ML1 and so on, right? Okay, so until here, any questions? I saw in the chat, there's one question. Will we get SOLIDWORKS license? Yes, uh, you will get an education, oh, sorry, you'll get a student license in the SOLIDWORKS, uh, which I will share how you can do it later. Uh, okay, I will, I will post the instructions on times later. Okay, now, before I proceed, I also want to check how many of you using Mac? You can just put a thumbs up. Now, definitely SOLIDWORKS do not work with, Cat, uh, with Mac. It doesn't work with Apple. Okay, later NSYS in year three also doesn't work with Apple. So you need to have a Windows or a simulator for Windows. MacBook doesn't work. Yeah, SOLIDWORKS does not work with Mac. Okay? It only works with Windows-based platform. So your Mac need to have the emulator. I think you can install some way to make it have a Windows then you can install your SOLIDWORKS, yes. Otherwise, it will not work, okay? Uh, do I need a good computer for CAD? Uh, yes and no. I think the more important is that you need to have a, it is better to have a dedicated graphics card. Once you have that, it's not an issue, yeah. You can check the requirements uh, on the SOLIDWORKS website. Okay, so you will be given a chance to install uh, the student version. Now, of course, now the labs are all open. If you don't have that, you're expected then to use a lab. Now, all the labs have all this software installed. Your classes will be in C7, but if you go to the engineering lab in block E, ground floor, the computer labs there also have SOLIDWORKS. So you can also use the labs there for your, uh, for your assignments um, later, okay? Any other questions before I move on to the content today? Okay, so all the attendance will be taken uh, during tutorial and during lecture as well. Okay? So make sure your name, I think so far, okay. The name on Zoom should be recognizable. I think so far it's okay. Yeah, so that I can give you your attendance. Yeah, this week there's no tutorial. For week one, uh, only lecture, and then you'll have some time to uh, install the software. So in the tutorial, physical, you can use a computer lab computer. Uh, if you have a, if you want to bring your laptop, uh, also can. Okay. Any other questions before we proceed further? Okay, so if no questions, uh, we'll move on. I, I hope this will be a more interactive class, uh, not just me talking. You know, CAT is, actually CAT is a bit more on practical. That's why you can see the lecture is two hours, but your tutorial is four hours. Because during the tutorial, it will be a fully practical session where you practice on the spot how you do the, uh, how you do the modeling. Okay? You'll be practicing. Uh, the tutor will be there to assist you if you need any help on the, on the, during the tutorial itself. Okay, so today will be more on theoretical, lectures will be more on theoretical aspect uh, of, the, of the module. Okay, so if no questions, I'll start. Does the lab have charging outlets? Uh, I think so. There's an outlet there, yeah. Actually, I also haven't been in for two years. I also cannot remember whether there's a charging or not. I remember there are, yeah. But you may need to unplug the university's computer if you do charge your laptop. Okay, any other questions? You can just unmute and speak to me, it's easier. Okay. Uh, before I proceed also, is there anyone else from other program besides mechanical engineering? Anyone from electrical? Okay, so Wang Wen Ti from electrical, Lao Shun Hong from CE, Ng Wai Jun from CE, or well, quite a lot of CE. Okay, so anyone else from CE or EE? 
So far, I see one CE, uh, three CE and one EE. So are you all doing this as a minor package or just as an elective? Uh, minor, minor, minor. Okay, so everyone is a minor package. Huh? Great. Right. Okay. okay, so I'll start then. Okay, firstly, I just want to see how you understand CAT. So CAT, we know that it's a computer-aided design or computer-aided drafting. So how do you think that the use of CAT using a computer to draw, how does it affect the industry as a whole? How do you think it has affected the industry? Any ideas? Before CAT, how do you think the industry create drawings? Pen and paper, yes, correct. Physical sketches by hand. Okay, very good, right? Before the invention of CAT, it is all done on paper. And when we say paper, we don't mean an A4 paper. We don't mean an A3 paper. It's a, like an A1 or A2 size paper where you have a sketchboard, uh, you have a huge sketchboard and everyone is drawing them. So I'll show you some picture uh, after this. So of course, before that we use paper, uh, so that is the life before CAT. Can you imagine doing your CAT by hand this way? Of course, the first one you see on the left is uh, more like a construction, right? It's a, it's a, it's a planning for construction, uh, the housing and things like that. But you can see how difficult it was like before CAT. You need to actually, all the sketches, drawers are on the floor. Life before CAT. This is also life before CAT. Instead of computers, these are all bots, uh, sketch bots with huge pieces of papers. And you have each worker standing there drawing uh, into the paper, right? That's life before CAT. Now, without CAT on paper, each design may take a few weeks. Now, you have to imagine before CAT, uh, there is no tree, you, you can't really do a 3D drawing that you can rotate around. Imagine all the cat draw, all the cat drawing at the time, there are 2D cat drawing with different views of your final product and all your dimension. So you can imagine if there's a mistake, either you erase a small distinct mistake or you have to redo your whole drawing again. Yeah, if you do the wrong scale, uh, if you do a wrong calculation somewhere, everything has to be redone all over again. Now with cat, you can just use a computer, a simple part. You could do it in one hour. More complicated, maybe one day, a few hours, one day, you can finish the design, right? So, and if you have any mistake, very easily. You can just edit uh, in your CAD software. You can just click edit or you can delete the feature. You can even suppress the feature. Look at how your thing is. You can even add, you know, add features to see how your design is looking. If you don't like it, you can delete it. You can edit it later, right? So these are the differences between without a CAD and with a cat. Before cat, you need a storage room, a drawing storage room like this. Okay, all printed up. Now you may still have some of these, you know, like in the, if you go to like a city council where they still keep all this record in drawing of the city buildings and things, but particular those buildings are because before the digital time, they are old drawings already. So say you still have to keep it as a record. But with cat now, you can keep everything either on the cloud, or you just need a very small storage. Then you have all your drawings in there already. Okay, so without cat, the difference without cat and with a cat. Okay, so you can see the difference and how lucky uh, we all are at now where we have a cat. Even when I was doing my degree, uh, which is many, many years ago, we already have cat at the time, right? So, but imagine 20, 30 years ago without a cat, uh, it makes you wonder as well, how do people at the time send a spaceship, a spacecraft to the moon without uh, a lot of this aiding to help them, right? And how it makes our life so much easier now, uh, you know, how we compare with the scientists, engineers uh, at that time, right? So, so <clears throat> for this module, when we talk about CAE or CAT, there are actually three main differences. One is CAT, which is computer-aided drafting or computer-aided design. Then you have CAE, which is computer-aided engineering. 
Then you also have CAM, Computer Aided Manufacturing, right? So CAD, CAE, CAM, they're all using uh, computer software to help you with the process itself. But there's differences between CAD, CAE, and CAM. So uh, this in this lecture, we will look at what are the differences between these three uh, things here. Okay. So computer-aided drafting, normally we actually call it a computer-aided design, CAD. It's the use of computer systems to assist in the creation, modification, analysis, or optimization of a design. So now we do everything together in the software. Create, after we create, we don't like it, or it doesn't serve our purpose, we can modify. We can also use CAD to analyze our, uh, our design, whether it's suitable, and then we can finally optimize our design, okay? So the CAD is very important for us. It increases the speed of design development, uh, as you can see from the previous slides. Uh, we can improve our visualization and we can use it to improve our communication of a design. Yeah? Because we can show it as a 3D, uh, it will be easier. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can remove certain parts uh, and focus on certain parts. You can assemble them. So it becomes very easy for us to visualize the product data. Uh, eliminates design interference. Design interference, for example, you know, you can see earlier, if there are 20 person designing different components that you're going to assemble later, there are going to be some issues. Yeah? One may draw it a bit too big. They understand the wrong sizes. Then they cannot, you cannot put it together later. So these are all the interference in your design. Okay? Check design functionality and performance. So you can check also. Uh, if you are doing moving parts, you can use CAT to see later whether my moving parts, can it hit another component or not? Let's say I want to turn my handle. When I turn this handle, will it actually hit another part in my design or not. So you can do all this checking. If it hits, then I may need to redesign the handle to be shorter, for example, right? So we can check the functionality and performance without actually building the actual prototype yet. Because in the end, we still build the actual prototype, but before we build the prototype, we can do a virtual checking first, right? And we can create a database for manufacturing, including for CNC machine and rapid prototyping. Rapid prototyping here, of course, we mean our, our 3D printers our, for our 3D printing. Okay, so we can keep a record of everything for CNC and prototype uh, for our 3D printing later. So these are all, uh, that's why CAT has become very important for any engineering firms. And I don't think you'll ever see, at, at, at least nowadays, you won't be able to see an engineering firm without CAT anymore. So they may use a different software, but they definitely have a CAT software, even uh, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD, for example, right? Now, CAT, Computer Aided Design, has three, okay, has three parts here. One is a CAD, your design. One is your analysis, when you use our Computer Aided Engineering to analyze our parts. And then also we use it for visualization. So visualization, you can see, Compared to a 3D model, it looks like an actual uh, part that you have made, uh, an actual physical part, right? But actually, it's a computer visualization itself. Okay, so you do the design, you can do the analysis, and you can do visualization using CAD software. Now, when you talk about design, it refers to geometric modeling. Okay, geometric modeling, uh, how we represent the CAD design model. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, what you actually do is you create a 3D solid modeling, okay? Uh, this is solid geometry, fully defined three-dimensional solid shape with free-form curved faces, material, and mass property. So all these surfaces have thicknesses and you actually, you actually put uh, a certain material and it has a mass. So later when you finish the model, you can also estimate what is the mass of your, uh, of your, of your, of your product or of your design. Okay, and then in SOLIDWORKS, you, after you create a solid model, you can create a 2D uh, drawing of it, a 2D drawing. So 2D lines and text similar to conventional drawing. Okay. Of course, you can also use hand drawing to do this. Yeah, but this is a hand drawing. And then also you have a 3D vertices, corner to corner, points to points, and things like that. So they are just edges. Okay. This, again, this is a very rough drawing. Okay, a very rough 3D model. So what we do in a solid modeling will be this one here. Okay, where you have a full form, uh, full modeling, 
And important here is a free form curved surface. Some curved surface uh, can be represented by an equation. Sometimes if you have an equation, you know, for purpose of uh, aesthetic, uh, the designer may just roughly uh, do the curved surface, make it look nice. But in most of the engineering design, if you're, if you're talking about uh, aerodynamic design, most of these surfaces will, have, will be defined by a mathematical equation. So in the solid modeling, uh, you will use a mathematical equation to create a curved surface, and then uh, you add it into your solid model later. Okay, so that's a design part of CAD. Now, uh, if you're using solid works, you, as I said before, we will do a solid modeling. Then we can convert the solid modeling into a 2D drawing. Okay, now if you're, I don't know if some of you maybe you use uh, AutoCAD before. AutoCAD is the opposite. You do a 2D drawing first, then you convert the 2D drawing into a sort into a 3D drawing. Okay. Uh, you will still see some uh, engineering firms that are still using the AutoCAD. Okay. Some of them upgraded to SolidWorks, but some of them are still using the uh, AutoCAD. Yeah. But there are very there are different there are different ways to do it. Yeah. One is from 2D to 3D, SolidWorks is from 3D to 2D. Okay. Now, how do we do design in SOLIDWORKS? We cannot immediately go to assembly modeling. We always go to a part modeling first. So if you, let's say you're creating an engine, uh, you will create a crankshaft, the shaft, the crank arm, the crankshaft, and also the piston head. You'll do all this individually. And then after you have all the part file, we assemble them together. So we call this a part modeling. And each of these is a part file. And then we assemble them together. We call this an assembly modeling. Okay, so you can see here, we already included, um, let me just draw, sorry. Okay, so we already included here, then we put the crank arm here, and then we put the crank shaft over here, right? So we assemble them, and not just these three components, if you can see, what else did I not mention that is available in your assembly model? Can anyone spot? What else do you need to include into your assembly modeling usually? Screw, yes, very good. Your nuts and bolts, your screw, all these are part of your assembly modeling. But if these parts are actually standard parts, because you know screws, nuts and bolts, washer, they are all standard components. Uh, you will learn later how you can actually get all these standard components. You don't have to draw them. You can just add them into your, uh, into your assembly later. Okay, so you, uh, I think it'll be one in one of your uh, tutorial later. Okay, so you don't have to actually draw all the screw nuts and bolts yourself. You can download them and include into your SOLIDWORKS model. So part model, assembly model. After that, only you create autographic drawing. Okay, this is autographic drawing. Autographic drawing means uh, you have different view. Front view, top view, left view. You can have a detailed view, section view. All these are under your autographic drawing. Okay. So autographic drawing also you have different types. You have a uh, normally we also create autographic drawing for a part. We also create autographic drawing for an assembly. So each part will have a drawing. Assembly also have a drawing. Now why we need the assembly drawing is to help us to help the team when they're assembling the, when they are taking all the parts here and they want to assemble, the assembly drawing will help them to assemble them uh, more efficiently. They will know which part goes where uh, more in more detail. It gives them more detail rather than a 3D drawing. Okay, so it, it tells you how they can assemble. Yeah, so we also do all the drawing there. Okay. So part modeling, uh, we are using SOLIDWORKS, you will create a 3D solid part model, okay? And you define all the dimensions uh, in, the, in the part model. And of course, after you define, you can still change them, okay? Now, the very important in part modeling is not whether you can create a part or not, is how efficient you can make your part model to be. Now, what, that's why we, we say this here, can we make that in a way, if you change one dimension, other dimension in the part will change together, right? Because sometimes uh, when you do your, 
when you do a design, you know, uh, roughly if my part is this long, my diamond, uh, my my radiuses, my diameter should change together. Okay, so in SolidWorks, you can actually add in formulas. So when you change one dimension, the other dimension also will change automatically. So for example, if your same part, you have a same part file, but your part file you have different sizes. You can have a small, medium, large size. You can just change one, and everything else change automatically for you. So this is how you make it more. Uh, more efficient. So you, how do you define your model to make it more efficient like that? And in a part yourself, you also need to assign material properties. You can analyze the mesh properties. You can control the color and texture of the appearance, create photorealistic images, lighting, shadow, and also giving some perspective. Okay, so you can do all this for each part. Now, if you want to do the photorealistic image of all this, of course, uh, you, can, you can also do it all the photorealistic lighting shadow, you can do it at the end when you assemble the parts together. But all the appearances, all these you need to create for each part one by one when you actually create a part model. Okay, so you can see each part here. You can see each part here already very photorealistic, right? So when you assemble them, it will look like an actual uh, product later. So that is what you can do in part modeling. Now, assembly modeling is to assemble all the solid model parts together to become a final product, okay? Now, why we want to assemble model, as I said earlier, uh, you can actually use it to check when you're doing the actual assembly. Also, you can run analysis before you make the prototype. So we can do a motion analysis. Is this how I want my part to move? Uh, and I say mentioned earlier as well, will this part actually uh, hit another component when I'm trying to rotate? Uh, for example, here, is this bar here too long or too short? You can do all the motion analysis and assembly modeling to make sure that the dimensions are correct. So sometimes you may do a mistake. One of your gears here may be too small. And when you assemble immediately, you can see your gear is too small. It's a different size. So then you know that you need to go back to your calculation stage or your design stage. And then you need to redesign. There may be some error. Either it's a design error or it's a drawing or it's a modeling error, right? Then you can correct them and then you do your motion analysis later. So this will really help you before you actually create your prototype later. So that's the use of assembly modeling. Now, this is an example of orthographic drawing. We use a 3D model. We create a, 3, a, a 2D model, a 2D drawing of it. So you can have a, this is an isometric view, okay? And based on isometric view, we have the front view, right hand view, and the top view or the plan view. Okay, so similarly here, we can have an assembly drawing. Uh, we can have an exploded view of assembly drawing. Okay. Now, this is very important, the one on the left hand side, which is a part drawing, because it gives a detailed drawing of component to facilitate its manufacture. So when someone at the shop floor manufacture this product, they will actually do their quality check by measuring the dimension, by checking all these dimensions here to make sure the part fits the, uh, uh, they can either pass or fail the quality control later. Okay, we follow orthographic projection. Of course, uh, there'll be uh, other lectures and tutorials focusing on this later. Okay, so these are orthographic drawing. Okay, now visualization. Also an essential tool in computer-aided design uh, and it's used in all stages of life of a product. So when we say visualization, it's uh, to create high quality photorealistic image of a design. So you can see actually nowadays, uh, a lot of the product you see in advertisement or some of the product, uh, if, you, if you go on social media, where they are asking for, for you to, how, how, what do you call that? Uh? startups company, right? Before they actually make the prototype sometimes, they actually show you a visualization. That, vis that is actually a visualization, very photorealistic, that you can actually see the full function of it just by using an image like that, okay? So by setting up an environment with surrounding walls, a floor, and a seating light, you can capture impressive images. Now you can even put in like a human beings in there, you know, SolidWorks allows you to do that. You can stand next to your product, as a comparison of your, of your whole product with a human and things like that. So it, it, it is very realistic. You can do, uh, of course, this one takes practice and skill as well to adjust the color, 
adjust the shadow, uh, then the reflection on the surface, you know, you need to choose the correct material to represent uh, what you want, right? So this is visualization that you also can do this in uh, SOLIDWORKS. So for example, this is a solid modeling. After you do a visualization, you can see it is photorealistic. It looks as though it's an actual product or at least an actual model, and you're actually taking a picture of it. Uh, visualization, Iron Man, you can see this is actually a, it's just in the CAD software, but it looks very realistic, uh, almost like it's an actual model that you built uh, by hand. And that's just by incorporating lighting, reflection, and shadow on the ground. Okay, so these are different solid modeling on the left, visualization on the right hand side. Okay, now of course, SOLIDWORKS is not the only one you can do visualization. Uh, if you have done this before, uh, there are other software out there that can actually, uh, one of them is a 3D Studio, 3D Studio Max, I think 3D Studio Max, they, they also help you. But you also need to create the CAD model first before you can import the model into other software to create the photorealistic images for you. Now, these images, not just images, uh, once you create a photorealistic one, you can also make it into an animation, right? So that uh, that's how some of them do the advertisement uh, on, on, on social media as well, just by using the uh, photorealistic uh, 3D models. Now, what another useful function in CAD nowadays is to have a VR. Uh, when you want to do a virtual reality, everything inside is a 3D model. So you still need to have a CAD. You still need to create a CAD. So either as an architectural walkthrough, industrial design fly through, or to showcase your product under virtual reality. And of course, together with it is your augmented reality, AR. All these also requires you to do a CAD model. At the very basic, you need to have a, uh, a solid modeling here so that you can see the product under AR or under VR. If you want more, even more realistic, you can do the uh, visualization. That will be even more realistic later. Okay, so this is the, some of the uses of CAT uh, solid modeling. Okay, any questions so far on CAT? Mm. Yongpong, you want to say something? Can't hear you though. Okay, you can type it. I'm not familiar with what is Fusion 360. It's the Autodesk software, right? Fusion 360, if I'm not mistaken. Now, SOLIDWORKS is not the only company that creates uh, solid modeling. This kind of solid modeling, just now when I say that, uh, where is it? Let me go, let me look for the sentence. Okay, we say we create a 3D part with the dimension, meaning this is an accurate dimension, right? We call this as parametric modeling, meaning you actually use, uh, you actually use numbers, mathematical formulas to define your dimension. We call it parametric modeling. Now, this modeling not only SOLIDWORKS have this, yeah. SOLIDWORKS is one of the most popular company. And that's why in the university, we use SOLIDWORKS because uh, a lot of the company you go to later, they're also using SOLIDWORKS. There are other companies that provide uh, this kind of a software. So I think Yongpo, maybe Autodesk Fusion 360 is one of them. It's a different company. So Fusion 360 is from Autodesk. Uh, you also have a company called PTC. Uh, which is uh, called the Creo Parametric. So Creo or even older, comp all older company, they're still using a, an older version of Creo. They're known as Pro Engineer, P Pro E, Pro Engineer. Okay, so if you have parents or friends, older, uh, you know, uh, they have more experience in the industry, they may actually see this software. So SOLIDWORKS is not the only software, but we are using SOLIDWORKS as a tool for our teaching. But the important thing here is, uh, solid modeling is a transferable skills. So if you're using SOLIDWORKS here, when your company later, they are using uh, Creo, for example, you should be able to apply the same design principle 
in Creo. The, the only thing is you may need to relearn the, uh, the interface of the software. So they may put different function at different parts of the software. And that's the only thing you need to learn. But in terms of design-wise, the principle is the same. So if you want to extrude something, you want to create a circular hole, you want to uh, do any, anything, the, the skill is the same, it's transferable. Okay. All right, thank you, any sir. Other? Thank you, sir. Okay, I can hear you now. But you gave me a shock suddenly. <laughs> you were talking. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so CAT is that about uh, creating a 3D model. 3D solid model, okay? That is called computer-aided design or computer-aided drafting. Now, once you have created that, you can actually use it for computer-aided engineering, okay? So CAE is defined as the use of computer software to simulate performance to improve product design or assist in the resolution of engineering problem, okay? Now, we basically do simulation. Uh, so when I say simulation, it's not always just about uh, uh, structural analysis, like what is the forces and things like that. That is part of it, but it's not just about that when it comes to computer engineering. Okay, so what is the importance of uh, CAE? Okay, I think there's a mistake here, it should be CAE. Design decisions can be made based on their performance. So once you have done certain uh, analysis, you can determine uh, maybe this material is not good enough, you want to change the material, or the thickness is not enough, you want to increase the thickness and things like that. And design can be evaluated and refined using computer simulation rather than physical prototype. You can save money and time for this. Right? You can do everything on computer first uh, and make your required changes. And CAE can provide performance insights earlier in the development process when design change are less expensive to make. Yeah? Because this design change is on the computer. As I say, you can just edit, delete the part, edit the part, change the part, Okay, so is a we don't have to build any prototype yet, so we can use CAE to help us to determine uh, whether uh, our part is correct, our our design is sufficient or not. Right, what is the performance of our design? So, an example, we use a stress analysis. Now, this one here we can use NSAIS, uh, but SolidWorks also have its built-in function to analyze uh, stresses and uh, all this later. Yeah. Now you can also have CFD. Uh, I believe CFD in SOLIDWORKS is a bit more challenging. So normally if you do CFD analysis, computational fluid dynamics, uh, we will use a software like NSYS Fluent. Uh, you will learn this if you take an elective module uh, called computational fluid dynamics, you will learn how to use NSYS to create the, uh, to create a simulation next time. Okay, of course that's a, that's only an optional module. Yeah. Okay, so example of CAE, again, you can have a whole assembly, then you create a multi-body dynamics, kinematics and dynamic analysis of your mechanism. Uh, you can also do acoustic analysis, uh, boundary element method. So a lot of uh, CAE you can do. So once you created all the 3D model, you can even check acoustic analysis. For example, you check for vibration, natural frequency. So the part is going to be used in uh, airplane or some other things where it may vibrate. Yeah, so you can do all this uh, under using CAE as well. Okay. Okay, more here. You can also do CAE application like in manufacturing process, like during the casting process, uh, how well will our who is going to perform, how well is our product going to perform for casting. You know, sometimes it will tell you if you cast this, uh, this area here will not fill up properly, for example. And also we can use it for injection molding, plastic injection molding. Where should I put the injection point? Uh, if I put my injection point here, will my product be filled up completely? If not, then I may need to add other injection point uh, for, the, for my design. So these are another example of CAE. So it's not just strictly about product stresses and things like that, also about assembly, kinematics, dynamics. This one is about movement, right? Uh, sound, acoustic, and also for manufacturing later. So this is all we call computer-aided engineering. So of course, to achieve computer-aided engineering, what is the most important? You need to have your CAT model, your CAT model to begin with, okay? And finally, it's your computer-aided 
manufacturing. Now, completely aided manufacturing is to aid when it comes to manufacturing of your product. So after you create the part in CAD, you can actually export this CAD model into a CAM software. Now, SOLIDWORKS also have this, but in the university, you will learn in manufacturing module, uh, we are using a Power Mill software. So the software is called Power Mill, it's by Autodesk, Autodesk Power Mill. So what you do is you just import the part into the Power Mill, and it will help you to create a CNC path to manufacture the product. Okay, otherwise, you know, it's automated. You need to do your own programming by hand. But this computer-aided manufacturing actually helps you to generate all the programming code that the CNC machine can follow. Okay, in the past, when they don't really have this computer coding, the person doing the CNC, they will need to program it by hand manually. So they will need to type, uh, firstly, your tool move from X equals to zero, Y equals to zero. It will move from X to X equals to zero, uh, x equals to 5, y equals to 0, for example. And then what is the speed it should move? What is the rotational speed? And then how deep you need to cut? All these are manually in the past. So with the use of computer-aided manufacturing, it can do all this for you automatically. You can even preview in your computer software how is the manufacturing process, what is going to cut first. Uh, then it will also calculate how long it's going to take to finish this part and so on. Yeah? So as I say, you will learn to do this uh, in your manufacturing engineering module in your third year, right? So you can see cut out from CNC on the right hand side here compared to a SCAD model. So exactly the same. Yeah, so it just helps you to program it so you don't have to do the programming yourself when it's uh, on a CNC. Okay, and here's another one, a CAD drawing, and then you can see a CNC model here later. Okay, so that's computer aided manufacturing. So complete aided manufacturing, you need a CAD, okay? Then you can network your machine to all the different tools, your PC to different tools, and then you need to do a numerical control programming. So CNC represents computer numerical control. Uh, so this is a numerical control programming. So with CAM, you can automate this programming for you. So you don't have to type in your own programming later. Okay? So this is CAD. After you connect, you do the NC programming. Okay, so uh, the introduction is very simple. As I said, uh, that's all. Uh, do you have any questions? And after this, I'm going to show you the times page. Just a very basic times page uh, because I haven't populated. I will populate as we go along. Um, and then we will, I will also post how you can install the SOLIDWORKS license later. Okay. So is oh. Cura uh, and also like Idea Maker consider some uh, CAM actually? Yeah, it is a kind of a complete aided manufacturing. It's for prototyping. Yeah. So it creates a. So if you look, if some of you have done three D printing, you will see that the G code. If you open the G code, they are all CNC code. It tells you the location of your print head, X Y X Y X Y. How you move. And if you same, if you open the CAM late, when you go to your manufacturing engineering later, you open the CAM code, it's also the same, very similar code. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Where is the X, Y, is Y, where is that? Yeah, so they're all CNC coding. Yeah. So some say, Sheng Hong say, greatest creation, definitely. Yeah. That's why you don't have to learn to draw by hand. I remember I still have to draw 2D drawing by hand last time. We still have to learn that. So we have to draw all the block diagram, uh, then we draw all the view one by one. We still have to learn that last time. Any other questions or you want to say something? Okay, so no means uh, good. Okay, so I'll go to the website. Just give me a minute. So this is your times module site. So uh, I've already uploaded the module information here. So you can read through, please read through the module information. It will give you the uh, full explanation of what this module is, uh, all the MLO, PLO, all the assessment, the rubrics, and the week by week, okay? Uh, everything is there, okay? So the mapping is available here in case you want to refer to and the assessment due week. So any changes in the due week in the assessment, 
uh, we will notify you in advance, okay? Uh, but the weightage will not change. The deal rate may change a little bit, uh, but we will notify you in advance if there are any changes, okay? So uh, any lectures that are uploaded later, I will put in the lecture, I will put a YouTube playlist, so you can just go to the YouTube playlist, you'll be able to play back the recorded lecture today, and I also upload the slides here under lectures, okay? Under tutorials, assignments, and our tutorial will be face-to-face, -face, so there will be no recording, but I will upload uh, whatever files that you need to use for the tutorials uh, before the tutorial itself, okay? So you can have a, you can refer to it first before you go to do the tutorial in class, okay? Now, all the tutorials mostly will have a recorded video already. So this video, you can, uh, you can either try to do it yourself. Uh, if you're not sure how to do it, you can refer to the video. Or you can also ask uh, the, the tutor, the lecturer, who, are, who will be there. Okay. Uh, the lecture is one to two hours. So sometimes the lecture will be shorter. Sometimes the lecture will be longer, depending on the topic we are going to go through. Okay. In your timetable, is two hours. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So in case you don't open the MI file, I will share with you the MI. So this is the MI. Okay, basically it tells you what we are doing. Uh, outcome, mapping, assessment. Okay. And what are the approaches? What are the assignment tasks? What do we do? Okay, you can have all the details here already. Uh, the rubrics and also the student learning time, okay? Now, in the MI, actually, your lecture is supposed to be one hour. We have timetable to be two hours in case we, uh, sometimes some of the topic are more, a bit difficult, we extend a bit, but usually I will try to keep it within one hour, okay, as per your MI, okay? So this is your MI. I hope you all take a look uh, in this file here. Okay, so any for the module? Static. It's not static. Static, I thought the lecture already announced tomorrow, this week, no tutorial. I know Dr. Cho mentioned there's a tutorial, but uh, the lecture, we already clarified with Dr. Cho. So it will be all your tutorial will start next week. So this week is fully lecture only. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so if no questions, uh, I'm going to post the... Now, one thing I want to remind you is when you... After I post the method how you can uh, install the SOLIDWORKS, please do not share the activation code to anyone else because there's a limit to the number of license on the activation code. So if you share with others, in the end, we may not be able to install later. Yeah, so keep that to yourself only. Yeah, okay. That's all... Okay, so if no question, then I will see you next week for the lecture and then also for the physical classes. Um, now, uh, Harvey, I don't want to answer you that here. It's recorded. <laughs> will the license expire? No, the license will not expire. Yeah, you can have it on your computer. Because we, get, we keep getting updated version. Yeah. So uh, for this module, is it mandatory to have the newest version of the SOLIDWORKS? Or is it uh, okay to have like 2021, for example? Uh, we are using 2021. I think by when you finish this, uh, I think in May or June, you'll get a new version. But it's okay, like, any version is fine. As long as you can do the work. Yeah. All right, understand. Thank you, sir. Okay, any other things you're not clear? Yeah, if you're using version 2020, you cannot open 2021 normally. But if you have using 2021, you can open files from 2020. Yeah. 
So it, it's backward compatible, but not forward compatible, usually. Yeah. Any other things? Okay. Uh, now, for the physical lab, is anyone here still overseas? Physical tutorial, sorry. Is anyone here overseas? So everyone is back to campus, yeah? And everyone is fully vaccinated. You can enter the campus. Okay, since no one say otherwise, there is no online session. Yeah? Unless you have a very good extenuating circumstances, like you're not vaccinated, you cannot come back to class for a long period of time, or you're overseas due to visa issue, or your government is closed, airspace, you cannot come out, then we will give you a, we will prepare a hybrid version session. But if let's say you just say you want to go back hometown, you cannot online, you will be marked as absent. Uh, we will not have a hybrid, hybrid for you. Understand? Yeah? Because the university already said it's a back to class physically. Okay, Wei Heng, understand? Okay, anyone, any other questions? If no, then we stop here. So uh, one more thing, any question you can ask me either on times or send me an email. My email is also, uh, oh, my email on times, I'll put it on later. Uh, try not to send me a message on Teams because you're using the student uh, domain name Teams. I, I, most of the time, I don't get any notification that I have a message there. And I don't use Teams for teaching, so I will miss your, I will miss your message completely. So best way is to send me a message on Times or send me an email directly. Okay? Right? So I will see you all again next week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once I upload the, the the instruction to download, I will I will send an announcement to you. Right. Okay. So see you all next week. Take care.